Have you ever considered taking an orange and flattening its peel? Because the orange is spherical, it is impossible to flatten it without stretching or tearing the peel. Mapping Earth provides a similar challenge, turning the spherical surface of Earth into a flat map. In mapping, this flattening process is accomplished through a map projection. A map projection is a visual device that enables map makers to represent Earth's curved surface on a flat map. All map projections result in distortion of Earth's surface, affecting the apparent shape or size of an area or changing the distance or direction from one place to another. For example, Greenland and Argentina are of similar size, but in this common map projection, Greenland appears larger. This is an example of distortion. The goal of this tutorial is to introduce you to different kinds of map projections, their properties, and their uses. First, we will look at the graticule, the map maker's term for the system of lines used to locate points on Earth's surface. To understand map projections and their distortions, we need to understand the graticule, a grid of invisible intersecting lines that crisscross the Earth's surface. The equator and lines that run parallel to it indicate latitude. These are also called parallels. And lines that run from pole to pole indicate longitude. These are also called meridians. Every location on the Earth can be defined by its latitude and longitude. You can think of the graticule as Earth's address system. The values for latitude express their distance north and south from the equator, while the values for longitude express their distance east and west from the prime meridian. For example, New York City is located at latitude 40 degrees north and longitude 73 degrees west. Let's see how these coordinates are derived. To locate New York City using the graticule, you would measure 73 degrees west from the prime meridian, then measure 40 degrees north from the equator. The lines of latitude describe locations north and south of the equator. Latitude expresses location as an angular measurement. The globe, like any circle or sphere, encompasses an angle of 360 degrees. The equator is the starting point for measuring latitude because it divides the Earth into two equal halves. Latitude increases starting from zero degrees at the equator to 90 degrees north at the North Pole and 90 degrees south at the South Pole. The visual characteristics of parallels include Parallels are always parallel to each other. Parallels are evenly spaced along meridians. The distance between successive lines of latitude is constant. Parallels always decrease in circumference toward the poles. The lines of longitude describe locations east and west. Longitude expresses location as an angular measurement using the prime meridian with a value of zero degrees as the starting point. The prime meridian passing through Greenwich, England is the historically agreed upon starting point for longitude. The meridians converge at the poles. There are 180 degrees of longitude east and west of the prime meridian. The 180th meridian is directly opposite the prime meridian. The visual characteristics of meridians include all meridians converge at the north and south poles. Any two meridians are the farthest apart at the equator. The distance between them decreases towards the poles. Notice that meridians and parallels always intersect at 90 degrees. Directions north, south, east, and west always follow parallels and meridians. Let's find and follow the path of coffee as it is shipped around the world. First find the major coffee growing region of the world from where our coffee beans are shipped. This port is located at 23 degrees south 
43 degrees west. Brazil is a major coffee producing region, exporting almost one third of the world's coffee. Next, the port where our coffee beans are roasted, located at 38 degrees north, 122 degrees west. Oakland, California is a major shipping port on the west coast of the United States. Here, our coffee beans are roasted and packaged for distribution to other countries. Now, the final destination of our coffee beans is located at 35 degrees north, 140 degrees east. Japan imports more than 7% of the world's total coffee shipments.